Praise to the Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we're teaching you for just a little We're teaching according to the scriptures, the words of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Let's start in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. So let's start there. Matthew 4, chap Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right, so these are the words of Jesus Christ. All praise to the Heavenly Father in Christ. We're reading about the, the Most High's anointed one, the Christ of Israel, the Messiah of Israel, the Savior of the children of Israel, which is our people, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, Indigenous people of North, Central, South America, scattered throughout not just the Americas, the Caribbean, but throughout the whole world. Most High scattered us as a form of punishment because we turn from the living God and we worship false gods. Gods that are no gods. Let's get that real quick because Christ was teaching repentance. Repent from what? Repent from sinning against God and one another. Turn from breaking God's commandments, breaking the laws pertaining to loving God and one another turn from breaking those commandments and return unto the Father through Christ, through repentance. Why? Because the Most High's kingdom is at hand. Now I want to read the scripture in uh, Jeremiah chapter 2. Let's go to the prophet Jeremiah. And let's read verse 11. Because... Anytime we read in the Bible where the Most High speaks about repenting, the Most High is talking about us turning from our sins. Repent and change from breaking God's commandments and return back to the Most High. So let's read that in Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 11. How the nation changed their gods which are yet no gods. Have the nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? Now, let's examine what the Most High is telling us in this verse. All the nations that's on this earth, other than our nation, the people of Israel, when you look at the so-called Europeans, the so-called Africans and the Arabs, East Indians, the Asians, they stay true and loyal to their gods. They don't turn from one God to another to another God. They remain faithful and loyal from one generation to another, to the next. Throughout the history of the world, the nations remain loyal to their gods, which are yet no gods, like the so-called Europeans. They will forever continue to worship their God as a white God, or a white Christ with blonde stringy hair, blue eyes, they made images of these gods that in their mind is God in Christ. And they remain truthful and loyal to their gods. Even though these are no gods. What about the so-called Africans and Arabs? They continue to worship the gods that they worship. Throughout the history of their people. From one generation to another to another. The Arabs, they continue to worship Allah. The so-called East Indians, they worship Buddha, Harry Kushner, the so-called Africans, they remain loyal and faithful to the gods that to whom they worship all throughout their history from one generation to another. Yet these gods which the nations worship, they are no gods. There are no gods. Read on. But my people, but my people, meaning the most highest people, the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, read on, have changed their glory. Have changed their glory. Who is our glory? The Most High. The Most High is our God. The Heavenly Father, the Creator, and His Son, the Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ of Israel. The Most High is our God. Christ is our Savior that the Lord Father provided for us. That my people have changed their glory, meaning we turn from worshiping the true and living God 
unto what? But my people change their glory, read on. For that which is doeth not profit. For that which doth not profit. So our people change from serving the true and living God at one point into that which does not what? Profit. We're to worship the Heavenly Father. And we're to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to do that, we have to keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. But when our people turn from serving the living God and follow the gods of the other nations, which are yet no gods, what do we do? We turn from our power. We turn from our glory into that which does not profit. So we follow the ways of the other nations. We follow the customs and gods, the ways of living of the other nations tied to their idols. And that does not profit us because the Most High is the true and living God. Now, in that same chapter, let's read verse 13. Jeremiah 2, 13. Jeremiah 2, verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. For my people have committed two evils. So the Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, was preaching to our forefathers, our people. And the Most High said through Jeremiah, my people have committed two evils. My people have committed two great sins. What is that? Let's find out. They have forsaken me. They have what? Forsaken me. We have forsaken God. That's a that's an evil thing. To forsake God means that we have forsaken the keeping of his commandments. That's an evil thing in the eyes and sight of God. They have committed two evils. They have forsaken me. Read on. The fountain of living water. So the Heavenly Father is the source. For the living water that he provides for us in the form of the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, which is which is the spirit of God and Christ. So we forsook the Heavenly Father. The, the, the Heavenly Father, we forsook the Heavenly Father. And that was an evil thing in the eyes of God. And he is the source of living water living water that we can continually draw from and drink that leads to us living life abundantly prospering and have good success in all things that we do why because the love of God and the love of the brethren is what's being sown in our heart the most high is the source of the living water and to obtain that living water we got to return back to the commandments. And when we speak about coming back to the commandments, it's not just talking about his laws. It's talking about what's written in the law and the prophets and in the Psalms. Because in the law and the prophets and in the Psalms of David, it leads us to Christ. So to obtain the living water, we got to get back into the scriptures that are written by our forefathers through the inspiration of the Father, for our learning, that through patience and hope of the scriptures we may have hope. Read on, brother. It says again, They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out, cisterns. And hewed them out, cisterns. Read on. Broken cisterns. Broken jars. Read on. That can hold no water. That can hold no water. The gods of the other nations, Following this world's Christianity, Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah Witness, Islam, Afrocentricity, being a, a, a Buddhist, or some of our people say, I don't do, I, I don't follow no religion. I just, I just live my life the way I live. Well, that is a religion. That's the idolatry of self. So that's like we have a source of living water, a fountain of living water that we can continually draw from and drink by believing in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. We forsake that. And then we make jars that got holes in it 
that can hold no water. So if you pour water into jars that got holes in it, it's broken, how you gonna live and sustain yourself? You can't. That's why we have to repent. We gotta return back to the source of the living water. Now let's go to Proverbs 13. Proverbs chapter 13. And let's read from, uh, I'll get the verse in a moment. Proverbs 13 and 14. Proverbs 13 and 14. The law of the wise is a fountain of life. The law of the wise is it's a fountain of what? Life. So by the Most High's commandments, being part of who we are, by us meditating in the law of God, the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and the Psalms of David, it leads us to who? Christ. All roads lead to Christ. All, all roads lead to the law, the prophets, and the Psalms, leads us to Christ. Because in the law, and the prophets, and the Psalms, in the commandments, we read about Christ. So read that again, brother. The law of the wise is a fountain of life. The law of the wise is as a fountain of life. So when we're grounded in the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and the Psalms of David, and we read about Christ in those scriptures, and we repent of our sins and believe in Christ, repent of our sins, become baptized in water under the power and authority of Jesus Christ we receive remission of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit which is the living water and when we have that living water the most I said the law of the, the, law of the wise is as a fountain of life it's like water that the words of Christ the commandments that he gives us it's like water that we can continually drink, draw from, drink, that leads to us abounding in the fruit of the Spirit. Read on, brother. To depart from the snares of death. Because there are many snares that lead to death. Drug selling, murder. How you doing, brother? Drug selling, murder, adultery, fornication, serving other gods, dishonoring father and mother. The ways of this world promote these sins. Because all that's in this world is the lust of the flesh. To lust with our eyes. To be filled with pride. The idolatry of self. And in this state of mind, we're easily going to give in to the different snares and paths that lead to death. These different traps that's out here, see? See, the commandments of God are unique in their ability. That when they're sown in our heart, we are able to discern through the spirit of, of what's written in the letter of the commandments and the words of Christ, we'll be able to discern evil from good. A righteous woman, an evil woman. A righteous woman, an evil woman. A path that leads to death, a path that leads to righteousness. God's commandments are very unique in their ability. When they're sown in our heart, it gives us the understanding to be able to see trouble a mile away. And to know, wait a minute, that's a wicked man. That's a wicked woman. They're being deceitful. They're trying to deceive me. Because there are many snares, traps that lead to death. And Satan the devil, he's roaring around. He's roaring like a, he roams like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and trap. And without the commandments of God sown in our hearts through faith in Christ, we won't be able to discern right from wrong, evil from good. So that's why it's very important for us to understand what's written here. So let's read that verse one more time. Proverbs 13, verse 14. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to the poor from the snares of death. Now remember, we forsook the living, the living God. We forsook the, the fountain of living waters, 
the living God and changed our glory for that which doth not profit. Following this world's Christianity, you're not going to learn the commandments of God. That's idolatry. Being a Baptist, a Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah Witness, a Muslim, a five percenter, Afrocentricity, an individual, idolatry of self. We're making jars that have holes in them that can hold no water. It's not going to profit our people. You can't drink from a broken jar, but we can drink from a fountain of living water. Because that living water that the Lord is talking about is something that's spiritual. It's the spirit of God in Christ and the most high right and the commandments in our heart and inward part. So these commandments are unique in their ability. When they're sown in our heart and we applying and walking in them, we can discern right from wrong. If you'll be able to discern right from the get-go, nah, this woman ain't the one for me. Because I already see where she's coming from. Dealing with a woman like this, you're going to have a lot of problems in life. Because this sister here, she ain't about these commandments. She's not about these scriptures. She just want to fornicate. She's dealing in lust. And a, and a wise man going to be like, nah, the scriptures say that when a man take a woman to wife, like to buy a six share of the wife, that brother said, I take not this my sister in lust, but upright. And when they prayed together, he said, he prayed to the Lord that the Lord bless them mercifully to be aged together. So the most high in the scriptures, when he teaches about marriage, he talking about a man and woman to become one flesh and aged together, a woman that you're going to be with for the rest of your life. Not hit and go. Not another sexual conquest like this world promotes in music, TV, R&B, rap music, all kind, whatever it is, we're being bombarded and programmed into ways and paths of life that are snares and traps that lead to death. But to depart from the snares of death, we got to know the word of God and the commandments of God. And when we know the commandments of God, then we can discern and say, you'll save, we'll save ourselves a lifetime of unnecessary troubles when we know the commandments. Sometimes we don't even realize the depth of when we chose not to go into a path that, that's a snare and a trap and we continue to walk in God's commandments. Man, if the Lord was to show us what would have happened if we would have went that way, we'd probably lose our minds. Because people are losing their minds now because of the paths of life that they chose and they're reaping what they sow. That's one of the curses for breaking God's laws. The Lord said he would smite us with madness. Our people have lost their minds. Sorrow of mind has anxiety, depression, living in fear, drunkenness because of bad decisions, drug addiction because of bad decisions. So we rely on these things, why? Because we think that they're going to help us deal with the issues that we have. And we've yet to realize that when we're in this state of where we're losing our mind, we have sorrow mind, depression, that we have to look, why are we having sorrow? And you look back, we've made bad decisions in our life. We have to humble ourselves and say, you know what? I sinned against the Most High. I reap what I sow. I have to repent. And Lord willing, in His time frame, He's going to help me endure and overcome my problems. But we have to repent. That's the key. We have to repent. Fathers, I'm going to tell you a tale that you would never believe. So where we at? Oh, so Proverbs read that 13. scripture again. Proverbs 13, verse 14. No, no, I'm attacking Matthew. The law of the wise is a fountain of life. So God gave us commandments, brother, that we're to follow. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet. Right? These are a few of the commandments that God gave us. Now, when we keep these commandments, the wisdom that God gives us according to the keeping of these commandments is like a what? A 
fountain of life. A fountain of life. So imagine a fountain, brother, that has water, that you can drink from it. And the more you drink, the more, you know, blessed that you become in your life. That's what we have at our disposal if we get into these scriptures, if we get into the commandments of God. Read on. To depart from the snares of death. There are many snares of death. I knew. Between all, everything else and all the parties and everything else that becomes uh, life and death and uh, what we want to do in life and uh, the, the spirit, and the, to be spared and everything else too. Don't get me wrong. Who are you to judge? Who are you to judge? Who? Me? What are you talking about? People? No. Who are you to judge? No, no one's judging. No, you preach all that. No, what we're, we're preaching is, what we're preaching, I'm going to read the scripture again, read it one more time. No, 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 I know what the scripture is. No, we know what the scripture says, we don't know as we ought to know. You can always become more knowledgeable of the scriptures. Because once we say, I already know this, then now that's pride. Because we can say, oh, I know what the Bible says, I know what that scripture says. Then comes the temptation and the trial. And we can get weak and give in and sin and get punished by God, but we were the same one saying, I already know what the Bible says. We gotta be, we gotta be more humble than that, brother. So let's read that. Same uh, verse? Same verse. Okay. It said, the law of the wise is a fountain of life. So there's no judging going on here because God is the judge. So all we're bringing out is the scripture that the commandments of God, when we apply them to our life, is, is similar to us drinking from a fountain of water that leads to us obtaining everlasting life. Read on. To depart from the snares of death. So there are many snares and traps that lead to death. Are there not? Murder, adultery, drug selling, kidnapping, prostitution, and death. Things going on around us, yes. Now, to be able to see these things and not get entrapped in those things, we got to have knowledge of God's commandments. When we don't follow God's commandments, that's how we get into gangs and violence, murder, fornication, adultery getting with the wrong woman, getting a sexually transmitted disease. Now, when we say this, we're not saying these things to judge our people. We're saying these things that, so we can acknowledge that, yeah, if I apply myself in God's commandments, I'll be able to discern, to know that this is a trap, and that's a trap, and that's a trap. Even though people may offer you money or material things, or a woman may come onto you sexually, we're gonna know, nah, if I deal with this woman here, She's an adulterous woman. She's married. I can't sleep with this woman. That's adultery. See, but when we don't have God's commandments, we're like, hell, if a man ain't gonna take care of her, I will. See, Joseph didn't think like that in Egypt. Are you familiar? It's just, it seems like you're saying that you know the scriptures. What about Joseph in Egypt when um when he was tempted to commit adultery? You, you know what he told the woman when she said, sleep with me? Let's get an example of the commandments being a, a, a law of wisdom that's the, that, that are able to give us the ability to depart from the no, snares of death. Joseph said. What he said? Joseph said that anything in the in the in laws of uh, God and everything else will never be condemned. Everything else is that being married. That's everything. You're on the right track. You're, you're on the right track. You're, I like that answer. That's a good answer, but now, oh, I just want to read this for you if you have the time. This is Genesis 39 and 9. We're yeah, going... No, no, Genesis uh, 39 and it's like, uh, uh, not, not all, all the scriptures, it's all in the Bible. So the, I just want to read this. Let me just read this from Genesis 39 and 8. Just Genesis 39 and 8. It says, but he refuses. Uh, from the let's read the verse before that, uh, seven. verse seven. Okay. And it came to pass. And it came to pass after these things that his that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. Right. So we're reading where Joseph, which was one of the sons of Jacob, was in Egypt, and he was uh, he ran the affairs of a man called Potiphar that had great authority in Egypt. So what happened? Read that last part again. It says that his master's wife, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. So a married woman, the man of the house, she cast her eyes upon Joseph. She was looking at Joseph 
in a lustful way. Right? Go ahead. And she's, and she's that can happen to any of us, right? A married woman can look at you and be lusting after you. That may have happened in your life. I'm not saying this to judge. It may have happened to any man. Let's read on. And she said. And she said. Lie with me. Lie with me. So what does that mean? It's pretty clear what she's saying, right? Lay down with me. Sleep with me, right? Now remember, she's a married woman. In this world, what does this world promote? Adultery. Fornication. Not to respect people's marriages. Not to respect another man's woman. Read on. But he refused. But he what? Refused. He refused to sleep with this woman. Read on. And said unto his master's wife. And said unto his master's wife. Read on. Behold. Behold. My master would not what is with me in the house. It's me and in the house. So let me read this again. My master would not what is with me in the house. Go ahead. And he had committed all that he had not. That he had committed all that he had to my hand. Right. So basically what Joseph is telling this woman, look, your master, your husband, he gave me complete rule over, over the house. He trusts me all the way to, he trusts me in everything. He has committed all things in my hand. Read on. Verse 9. There is no greater in this house than I. There's no greater man in this house than me. Because his master, you know, would say, hey, look, because Joseph was a very discerning spiritual man that he can run a man's house with authority and, and run it right because he had that wisdom. Go ahead. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. Neither has he kept back anything from me but what? But thee. In other words, everything is at my disposal. He hasn't kept nothing everything back. Right. Everything is my decision. But when it comes to you, hands off. Hands off. He trusts me to the point where I can make all the decisions. I like that answer. In the house. But when it comes to you, hands off. Now, remember, when a woman is be, uh, being adulterous, she's flirting, right? She's trying to seduce you. That's what's happening. Go ahead. Because. Because. Thou art his wife. Because thou art his what? Wife. You're a married woman. I can't sleep with you. Even though she was coming seducing. Now let's read the next part. How then can I do this great wickedness? How can how then can I do this great what? Wickedness. What is it? Wickedness. Wickedness. So, wickedness. Thank you, brother. So for a man to sleep with another man's woman, that's what? Wicked. Wickedness. Go ahead. And sin against God. And sin against God. Can I? If I sleep with you, that's great wickedness. And it's a sin against God. How can I do that? How can I sin against God? Because he brought you and your husband together to be one flesh. So it would be a sin on my part, breaking the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery, and I would be sinning against God. So it's two things. If I'm sinning against God, I would be sinning against you and your husband. Now, imagine all our people were raised up in that understanding. Because there are snares that lead to death where men get involved in adultery relationships. Women get involved. But we're not being raised in this knowledge here, brother. Now, I understand you're familiar to an extent with this. And it's God willing, it has saved you in your life. But no, no, but, I'm not saved. Well, it, it can, if we apply it, it'll save us from problems. If we walk in the way Joseph did, it will save us from problems. Okay. So go ahead. Verse 10. Verse 10. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. As she spake to Joseph Every. day by day. So she spake to Joseph day by day. Every day she kept coming out. So she kept coming at him day by day. Day after day, day after day. Seducing him. Seducing him. Because sometimes when we try to endure the keeping of God's commandments, sometimes the temptation goes away. And sometimes they don't go away. And the Lord wants us to endure. The Lord wants us to endure. Well, I'm going to tell you too. You know what? I was raised Catholic. Okay. And everything else too. Like that too. You know what? You know what? And 
This world's Christianity really has nothing to do with Christ. Following Christ is keeping his commandments. The churches are not teaching our people the commandments of God. They're teaching you that we're in the grace. You don't have to keep no commandments. You know what? I got a big book at home and everything else. And I read it all the time. Okay. And this way to read things like this. So let's let's read this I'm first. I'm a new person and everything else too. You got to remember that, you know, I mean, really, really, you know, um, That's where we're reading. Yeah. Let me just finish this verse real quick, brother. Read that verse. So we are in Genesis 39, verse 10. And again, it says, And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her. So, he, so she kept seducing him day after day after day. Sometimes men, after one or two, three days, After one or two, three days of that same temptation over and over, we can get weak, right? And give in. Joseph wasn't getting weak. So, even though she came to him day by day seducing him, what does it say? That he hearkened not unto her. He didn't hearken unto her. So she kept trying to seduce him. Sleep with me, lie with me. Sleep with me, lie with me. And he wouldn't listen unto her. Man, in his sinfulness, can what? If we give in to the flesh, Thank you, brother. After the second, third time, you're like, and then give in, right? Yeah. Okay, let's read on, brother. To lie by her. To lie by her. He wouldn't even sit next to her. Because the woman was, okay, oh, just, just sit right here. Sit right next to me. But he wouldn't lie by her. Read on. Or to be with her. Or to be what? With her. He didn't even want to be in her presence. That's what... That's how we flee from sin. We flee from sin the same way we flee from a serpent. Right now, if a rattler snake came right here, would you be, oh, look at the rattler, and touch it and like play with it? No, if a rattler came, you go in the opposite way. That's how we have to be with sin. All right, I'm gonna tell you nothing. Get a cool yeah. desk, it's nice. from our sins and confess our sins as we're being baptized in water we're spiritually being joined unto the death burial and resurrection of Christ that's why Christ commanded for us sinners to be baptized because when we're baptized in that water brother our old man is dead and buried with Christ and the man coming out the water brother is the new creature in Christ so the same way Christ rose from the dead, we're to come out of that water walking in the newness of life. Why? Because, read it again. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. 
behold, all things will become new. So like you said, you have sins that you feel that you need to ask for forgiveness for. Like you said, you were in the fighting in Baghdad and where was it? In Syria. You were in Syria. So you want to make an atonement or make amends. bad right they say these things before God which is in secret see pray say these things in secret to God which will reward you openly see so the first step though brother let's read this Isaiah 55 and 6 now Isaiah 55 because and if 6. the Bible say if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things have become new so if a man murdered or committed adultery right or you know was in the army yeah, sometimes in the army you got men fornicating, committing adultery, murdering people, uh, breaking Sabbath, all these things. Not me, we, okay. Not me and my team, no. Okay, no, okay. No. But you did say that you wanted to make amends we're, for we're, certain we're, things. We're, we're, we're fucking, uh, we're rangers. Right, but you, you earlier you spoke about making amends, right, for certain things that... I like to make Okay, well that's, this is how we do it. Isaiah 55 and 6. Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. So seeking the Lord while he may be found is asking for forgiveness, praying while the opportunity is there. Because you can't repent in the grave. You can only repent when you're alive. When you're dead, there's no more opportunity to repent. So we got to call on God while we're living today. Read on. Call ye upon him while he is near. While he is near, call upon him. How do we call upon him? I'm going to add this scripture to it. Acts 22, 16. And now, why tarries thou? Arise and be baptized. And wash away thy sins. Calling on the name of the Lord. So what is the scripture saying? We have to repent from our sins and be baptized in water. Because when we're baptized in water, confessing our sins, old things are passed away. All that. things become new. Forever. Right. Right. You gotta leave me and my team. And what do we do? Okay. We well, follow is... the orders. No, no, no. You gotta understand. No, no. I don't care about everything else and that and that's written and everything else. So I, I'm looking for it. that event and everything else. This is how we make amends, bro. Let me just read this verse. Now, can you tell me how to make amends? Yes, you know the, the Bible, the Lord is going to tell us how. You know what? Because the Lord is going to tell. He's know, telling us now. Everybody else, too. You know, I'm going to get Christian because I forgot about the book. You know, I was atheist for a long time because nobody gave me that. I was born Catholic and everything else, too. You know, but, but you know, but you know what? No, no, no. You know what? Nobody gave me that. You know, and nobody gave a shit, nobody gave any person or anything else a shit to me and everything else to me. I'm 53 years old. I got a leg over here that's heavy, boy. Now's the time to make those amends. That's, that's, what, that's what we're trying to share with you in the scripture. That's why I want to read this verse. Go ahead. I see how 55 and 7. Let's check it out, bro. It says, let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked forsake his way. So any sins that we're committing against God or one another, we have to forsake that. We have to put it off. We have to turn from it. Read on. In the unrighteous, unrighteous man, his and the thoughts. Un, and the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Because where does all sin begin? Right here. Murder, adultery, fornication, idolatry. It all starts here. Leaning upon our own understanding. Yeah, you. Right, ourselves, exactly. So we have to we have to put off those unrighteous thoughts to turn from unrighteousness. So now there's a spiritual, you said born again, right. There's a spiritual rebirth. There's a spiritual rebirth that must take place within us. 
That's that fountain of living water that we were reading to you about earlier. That fountain of living water being right here, brother, in our heart will change us. It'll go, it's going to change us. Almost done, man. And let him return unto the Lord. And let him, you, me, this brother, our people, we're to return to God. We're to repent from our sins and return to God. So now let's go to James chapter 4 and verse 8 to go with that. Now, you're familiar with James. This brother James, he was our Lord's brother. Yeah, James, yeah. Okay. Now, he says something very powerful for us that if we take yeah. heed and apply, we do well. Yeah. So let me read this real quick. It's James chapter 4 and verse 8. Yeah. Wait a it minute. Says, okay, you James, James uh, verses uh, 6. Okay. I mean, 4 to 6. Okay. So we're going to read 4 and 8, though, okay? We can read the sixth verse too. Let's read. It. You want to read this? Let's read the sixth verse. Too. I know. I know. James, I know all right, brother. We read it. Let's read the sixth verse. Go ahead. I'll read the sixth verse. James, James four and six. Go ahead. James four and six. But he gave it more grace. That God is very graceful and merciful unto us. Go ahead. Wherefore he said. Wherefore he saith. God resisted the proud. God will reject us and resist us if we're proud. So we can never say, I know the Bible. I know the scriptures. I know the commandments. No. We're being proud because we don't know as we ought to know. Go ahead. But give it grace unto the humble. But if we humble ourselves, God is merciful. Right? That's that's the scripture you James 4 and 6. Right? Yeah. Let's read the seventh verse. It says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. So now we have to, and now that we're repenting and born again, we have to submit ourselves to who? The Creator. God. God, thank you. Go ahead. Resist the devil. And resist the devil. A lot of times we resist God. And submit to the devil. That's backwards. <laughs> the devil, we give in to the devil, give in to the flesh, our pride, our lust, our anger, and then we give in to the devil and we fight God. That's a battle we never go in. But when we turn it around and we submit to God, submit to his word and his commandments by humbling ourselves, and we fight the devil with these scriptures, now. Now we can overcome the devil. Now we can overcome Satan. Because did not Satan tempt Christ for 40 days and 40 nights? Yes. And did he not afterwards, after Christ was hungry, did he not tempt him more and more and more? Yes. What did Christ come back? Every time Satan tried to draw him away from God, what did Jesus say? As it is written. As it is written. As it is written. Meaning we have to stay in, in the scriptures as they're written to fight the devil. And it's not a physical battle, it's a spiritual battle, brother. Read on. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Right? About an hour from now, the devil could try to draw you away into doing something bad. Right? Tonight, tomorrow morning, resist the devil and what? And he will flee from you. The devil will flee from you if you stay in this word, if you stay in these scriptures. Do you have a Bible, brother? What? I don't have it with me. You don't have one? Let me see if I got it. No, no, no. I got a bad Bible at all. You never know. It's okay. It's okay. You got to look for anything else, too. I have a Bible. Okay, you don't need it? Okay. You got one? All right, you said you got one. I understand. Okay. I understand. Okay. So let's get it. Let's read on. Let me get one more verse here. I mean, something's wrong with the Bible. and then I'm going to get a scripture on what you were saying. Go ahead. James 4 and 8. It says, draw nigh to God. So we have to draw nigh to God in prayer. Getting into these scriptures. Go ahead. And he will draw nigh to you. And God will draw nigh unto what? Us. Go ahead. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Meaning put off sin. Go ahead. And purify your hearts. 
G double minded. So we're to purify our minds from being double minded. Because sometimes there might be a side of us that wants to do good, that wants to do right, and follow God. But then because of the devil and his traps, we give in. So we become in our double mindedness, we're sinning against God. Okay, so now I want to get a scripture that you said about anger. This is Ecclesiasticus 8 and 16. Ecclesiasticus chapter 8 and verse 16. This is a good one on anger. You said, you said something about anger a moment ago, right? Okay, let's get it. it says Ecclesiasticus 8 and 16. Read it. Strive not with an angry man. So if you angry and somebody else angry and you got angry, I got angry issues, somebody else angry, the Lord's teaching us. When somebody got that spirit of anger on them, that's what usually happens in a confrontation. Somebody's getting you angry because they're already angry themselves. So what did it say? It says, strive not with an angry man. Don't strive and contend and fight with a man that's angry. Go ahead. And go not with him into a solitary place. Don't go not with him into a solitary place. Sometimes you can get in a confrontation like, all right, let's go around. Let's go behind the building right there. Let's settle it, me and you, alone. Come on, let's go around the corner in this solitary place. See how tough you are, man. Right? That's what people say. Go ahead. For blood is as nothing in his life. Blood is as nothing. In his what? We, in his sight. In his right sight. Now. We, throw, we don't have to go hide. <laughs> right. So, but, but the point is, a man, he'll take you in the back or he'll do it right in front of you, in front of everybody because I understand that. Because blood is like nothing. He'll spill blood like that water in that, that plastic bottle. A man will spill water. An angry man, a man filled with hatred. He'll, he'll spill blood like he's spilling water. So we have to discern, you know what? I got, sometimes we have to swallow our pride. Be like, man, it ain't worth it. We walk away. But don't go because what Satan can get in us and we get, man, I ain't going out like that. Who you think you are? Blah, 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 going back and forth. And what happened? You go behind the building. Guess what? You ain't coming out. Go ahead. Uh, it says, and where there is no help, he will overthrow thee. See? Because no one's around, he's going to take your life. So that's the scripture to help us. You know, to me, I don't care. You know, I want somebody to be that bad to me. Let's go to James 1. James 1 and... No, James, it's James uh, 13. Yeah, James 1 and verse 20. James 1 verse 20. For the wrath of a man worketh not the righteous, righteousness of God. When we feel with wrath and anger, uncontrollable, it's not going to bring forth any righteousness of God. Read on. Verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all wickedness. So now from there, I want to go to uh, the book of Genesis again. Okay, you go back to Mark. You go back to Mark. Okay. Well, actually, you know what? I want to go back to James 4. I'm sorry, no, James 4. You know what? I'm going to tell you again. You go to Luke. You go to Luke and verse 7. Well, there's some good scriptures in Luke. I just want to finish that other verse. This is Luke chapter 4. Yeah, no, 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 no. And uh, we read the 8th verse, right? Yeah. You got to believe me, brother. Read the 9th verse. I'm, I'm, James 4 and 9. You got you to gotta humble yourself. Remember, humble yourself. God resists the proud to give grace to the humble. When the scriptures go out, we should be trembling in the word of God. Not, oh, I already know that. I don't want to hear this. We got to be like, okay. Give me some more. I want to hear some more scripture. Let's read it. James 4 and 9. Be afflicted and mourn. We're to, we're to be afflicted and mourn for the things we've done against God and one another. Go ahead. And weep. We're to cry before the Lord. Go ahead. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. So the laughter that we had in sin now has to be turned into mourning for the sinful things we did. Go ahead. And your joy to heaven. The joy that we had in evil has to be turned into what? Heaviness. Go ahead. Verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. See? We're to humble ourselves in the sight of who? God. When the scripture's going out, I want to hear scripture. Go ahead. And he shall lift you up. God will lift us up 
when we humble ourselves low, God will lift us up. But if we're filled with pride, the Lord will be like, all right, let me bring you down back to the earth. Woo! That's why Christ said in Matthew, uh, go to Matthew 23. And verse 12. Matthew 23, verse 12. Matthew 23 and 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself. If we exalt ourselves, we're filled with pride, which we don't ever want to do. Whenever that spirit of pride gets in us, we got to what? Check it right away. Because if we exalt, if, if we don't hump, read that again. And whosoever shall exalt himself. So if we exalt ourselves, being filled with pride, not repenting from our sins, go ahead. Shall be abased. Shall be what? Brought down low, abased. Go ahead. And he that shall humble himself. But if we humble ourselves to the word of God and repent, read on. Shall be exalted. We're going to be what? Exalted. The Lord's going to bless us. Then we have to endure. Now we're going to go back to James 1, verse 12 now. We have to repent from sins. Walk in God's commandments, brother. You know what? I walk and I walk and I walk and everything else. Right. You don't. You got to do it. Man, we're not saying you don't, brother. What we're saying is we can always do better. You understand? We can always do better. You're trying to live according the best you know, the same way with us. But the Bible also tells us that we don't know as we ought to know. And to Christ said the greatest in the kingdom of God is for us to become like children, meaning teachable, humble, faithful. Just like a child, they always want to, they got questions and questions. They want to learn. They don't act like they already know. You ever teach a little child? They don't say, I already know that, Dad. I already know that, Dad. They're not going to say that. We say that in our pride. <laughs> so let's read that. James, James 1 and 12. James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Like Joseph, the woman tried to sleep with him, and he said, how can I sin and do this great wickedness against God? Then she kept coming after him day after day. He wouldn't lay with her. He wouldn't sit next to her or listen to her. Seduce her. Seduce her. That's enduring temptation. That's how we got to be. You know, we got to endure. We got to stay. We got to fight. Stay in these scriptures. And resist the devil by staying in these scriptures. Guess who's gonna fight our battles? Oh, he gonna fight our battles. And when he fights our battles, <laughs> ain't nothing gonna get in the way, bro. Even the evil spirits tremble at the presence of God. That's why when the Lord was healing people, casting out demons out of the people, they said, "Have thou come to torment us before our time?" Even the devils tremble. That when we put these scriptures mm -hmm. to the side, brother, and we lean upon our own understanding, the devil's like, yeah, I got this guy here. Woohoo! See, read on. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. Blessed is the man that endured the keeping of God's commandments. For when he's tried, because we're all going to be tried, but as we're being tried, we want to endure to the end. Go ahead. He shall receive the crown of life. He shall receive the crown of life. What is the crown of life? to be made immortal. That's what Christ get. We don't believe that we can be made immortal. We can. In the beginning, God made us to be immortal. But through envy of the devil came death. Because Satan you know, deceived us. Think just like that too. Right. When well, you can't lose that faith that you once had. It has to be restored. Because for you to lose I that hate, faith... I hate a lot of things and I hate a lot of fucking... I mean, I hate Right. He shall receive the crown of life, the head, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. If you love Christ, not Christ promised us to, that we're going to have everlasting life. But we have to go to Ecclesiastes in Apocalypse 428. Yeah. What you believe, you have to restore that, brother. You have to, you have to restore that. Because sometimes Satan can get the best of us and we start to lose the faith. This is Ecclesiastes 4.28, brother. It says, Ecclesiastes 4.28. A strive for the truth unto them. Strive on... See what it said right here, brother? Look. Twenty-eight. Right? Yeah. 
strive for the truth unto what death and the what and the, I'm going go ahead and the Lord shall fight for thee see what it said right there I want you to read it for yourself I can't see I'll read it for you strive for the truth unto death and the Lord shall fight for thee the Lord shall fight for thee when we submit ourselves to the word of God and the commandments Guess who's going to fight our battles? The Lord's going to fight our battles. I'm going to tell you a real quick, you know what I mean? You can um, check to everybody else and everything else and just uh, everything else. But uh, I'll take a picture with you cats, you know what I mean? I'll take a picture with you guys, you know? And you know, but it wouldn't happen to me. You know, we're here for a reason, like you said. Yeah, you know, do you good. think we're out here to, I mean, you know, for fresh air? Uh, yeah, we're out here because, because we love God and we love our people. And we try to share this word with brothers like you, you know. Maybe, like you said, maybe you was thinking about doing something and these scriptures will help you after we leave, you know. <laughs> but remember, if we strive for the truth, even to the point of death, the Lord's going to fight for you, bro. That's why Moses told our people, stand back and see the salvation of God. You ain't got to lift up a hand or a sword against these Egyptians. The Lord's going to destroy these Egyptians before your eyes. You ain't even got to fight against them. The Lord's going to. And what did Moses do? He parted the Red Sea. And we walked, we walked through the water, water on our, a wall of water on our right and left. We walked on dry land. And when the Egyptians chased us, what happened? They tried to follow us with their chariots. The Lord, Christ, shot the wheels off the chariots and the waters drowned them. And in the morning, we saw dead bodies on the seashore. We didn't have to do nothing, brother. You think about, you know, Joseph, you know, and, uh, and uh, right. So let's read this. What's that? Mean person? I'm a mean person. You're a mean person. Okay, well, you know, go to uh, Romans 14. You know what? I'm going to be all nothing like that. None of us want to be mean. Nobody does. Because being mean is hurtful towards other people. No, no, no. So this is Romans 13, 11. But then, you know what? I'm not. Start from verse. Yeah. Start from the Abrams. No, right. no, no. Romans 13 and 8. Let's read this, bro. Okay. Oh, no. Say, man. Say no, we trying to distract us. We got to stay focused. Read the eight verse. He says, all no men anything. So if we're indebted to anything, this is the only thing we're to be indebted to. Go ahead. But to love one another. That's what we're indebted to. Love one another. Go ahead. He says, for he that loveth another. For he that loveth another. Okay, like I look at you, you know who you remind me of? My father. You understand? You're my brother. Brother. We're all brothers. We all, we're 12 tribes, one nation, the children of Israel. You know, it says, For he that loveth others hath fulfilled the law. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Everything that the law requires of us in the law is fulfilled by one word, love. Love according to the commandments. Uh, okay, read the next verse. It says, verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. If I love you, I can't sleep with your wife. Read on. Thou shalt not you kill. can't sleep with my wife either. Right. Go ahead. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not kill. If I love you, I can't kill you. Read on. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not what? Steal. If I love you, I'm not going to steal from you, brother. But we but Do our people commit adultery and steal from one another and murder one another? Yes. Right? We have to repent from that and learn to love one another. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Bear false witness? Well, like, I make a lie about you. Yeah. Why would the, what's your name, by the way? My name's Sa'adu. This Sunny. is Brother Luke. Sonny Bird. Sonny Bird? Okay. Sunny Bird. That's native? Native, yeah. native. okay. So you now. I got, I got my gun in my pocket. I got okay. my nun over, my knife over here and everything right. else. And I, I just wanted to talk to you guys and right. everything else too. And I sit over here and, and listen. And, 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 and what's the message? Love. That's the love. Love. 
do that to us. So that we, we pray that they repent. Go ahead. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet. Because if I covet your clothes or one of your possessions or your car, I might be apt to what? Steal it from you. Yeah, yeah, Christ said thou shalt not covet a dog. Or your phone. Oh, you drop your phone. You know, boom, boom, I'm going to tell you again too. Let me just finish this yeah. verse. I'll let you get your point. Go ahead. It says, but if there be any other commandment, if there any other commandment, you know, you know like y'all should not steal. Keep the Sabbath bed. It is briefly comprehended in this saying. So, in this saying, all the commandments are briefly comprehended, understood. Go ahead. Namely, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I have to love you as I love myself. I love you. Now go to Matthew 7 and 12. Matthew 7 verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophet. Everything that God and the laws and the prophets spoke unto us could be understood and do unto others as you would have done unto you. So if I see you, I want to respect you. I want to love you. You can I, turn I, around I'm, the camera and everything else. I'm going to get a picture. Yeah, I'm okay. going to take a picture. Yeah, you should like that too. All right, before because you go. You know what? I'm going to tell you too. I'm going to move you all down the road. I'm oh, you got to get going? Seat. All right. Well, hey, look. It was great building with you. No, no, no. Okay. Don't get me wrong. You know what? I'm Remember, what did John the Baptist say to one of the soldiers? Put no man in fear. So, anything lastly you wanted to say before you go on? You know what? I love you guys, and I want you to understand that I. Uh, Sins and everything else too, but you gotta bring me to understand the Bible. Okay. Yeah, well, that's it, brother. I'm sure there's certain things you know that we can never remember. We can never say, I can't learn more. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. You know what? I read the Bible a many times. I mean, I've, I've read the Bible a couple times, three times. Okay. And, and, and then, um, King James, and, and there was always something else to do. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So you gotta believe me that it was just like that. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. Then I'm gonna go over here. Okay, bro. Hey, man. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by, man. We appreciate it. We appreciate your time. Go ahead. Okay, say hi. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Come over here. Say hello. Sunny Bird right, want to yeah. say hello. All right, we're here with Sunny Bird. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> hey. Hello. All right, my brother. All right, my brother. Be safe out there, brother. All right, be safe. Always. Oh, okay. okay. All right, brother. All right, brother. <laughs> you said you're good with the Bible, right? You said you have one? Yeah, I have a good one. Okay. All right. You want to take down our number so you can keep in contact with us, or you good? No, I got you. Okay. All right. Write it down real quick. No, I got you. Okay, all right. Good, all right. All right, bro. All right, bro. All right, bless you. So let's just end it in Matthew 4 17. 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 Matthew 4 17
Gospel Superstar. Matthew 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right, so that's the summary of the message of what Christ is all about is for men to repent from their sins. To us to confess and forsake the breaking of God's commandments. Come out of this world. Come out of this world. Because all that's in this world is promoting everything against God's commandments. So we repent from our sins. Then we're preparing for the kingdom to come which is through Christ. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we get the kingdom through Christ, but in order to obtain that kingdom, we have to repent from breaking God's commandments. I want to read that scripture one more time. Uh, Acts 22, 16. Acts chapter 22 and verse 16. Because we read it to go with Isaiah 55 and 6. But we want to read it one more time. Acts 22, verse 16. And now, why tarriest thou? And now, why tarriest thou? So, now we're reading about Ananias speaking to a brother called named, a brother called uh, Saul of Tarsus. He was going through something deep within himself where he was tarrying to turn to the Lord. Now, mind you, at this point, you know, in his life, this man had persecuted the church of Christ beyond measure. Men, women, and children. He consented unto Stephen's death. So he had a lot of guilt and sorrow for what he did. But one thing we can't let get in the way of us repenting is guilt and sorrow. That's why the Lord suffered for us. Our griefs became His. The Lord took care of it on the cross for our brother. That's why His brother in Christ saying, what did He say? One more time. And now, why are tarries now? Why tarry is now? To tarry means you putting it off. Why are you tarrying to put it off and return it to God? Read on. Arise and be baptized. Get up, brother, and get baptized. Let's get in that water. The Lord's calling you to repentance. Get in that water. Read on. And wash away thy sins. And wash away thy what? Sins. Thy sins. Wash away your sins. Get in that water. Because our sins are washed through the blood of Christ. Now to receive the full blessedness of the blood of Christ washing away our sins, we have to spiritually become joined to his death and burial and his resurrection. By outwardly doing the things that by outwardly doing the thing that's tied to that spiritual water baptism. So I said, look, get in there, water, wash away that sins. Because when we're baptized in water, our old man is dead and buried with Christ. And we come out there, water, as Christ rose from the dead, we're to walk in newness of life. That's the spiritual aspect of the physical act of water baptism. Paul explained that very clearly when we read in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. So let's read on. Calling on the, calling on the name of the Lord. So we got to call on the name of the Lord. We have to acknowledge that Christ died for our sins and he's sitting on the right hand of God. And if we call upon him, the Lord will bless us. Read on. Verse 17. And he came to pass. So 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 that so that was so that's the scripture of Acts. That was Acts 22:16. Let me get Acts 9:18. They go with it when it actually happened. Because in Acts 22, 16, Paul is giving the account of what actually happened in Acts 9. So let's read Acts 9 and verse, is it 18 verse, the baptism part? No, uh, yeah, 18. Acts 9, verse 18. 
And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. But now, and Ananias prayed over uh, Saul of Tarsus, and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, because he was blinded. He was blinded for three days. Saul of Tarsus was blinded for three days. So then Ananias had to pray over him, and it, it's like scales was removed off his eyes. Because when we're living in sin and hatred, we're blind. The Bible said when we hate our brother, we walk in darkness. And we, we know whether or not where we walk. Go ahead. And he received it sight forthwith. And he received the sight immediately. Just like that. See? See how the Lord step in and bless us in our moment of need the most? Go ahead. And arose and was baptized. So... Saul of Tarsus arose and was what? Baptized. He arose because Ananias said what? Arise. Why tarry us now? Arise and be baptized. Wash away thy sins. Call on the Lord. And what happened? Did that again? And arose and was baptized. So Saul of Tarsus arose and the brother was baptized in water. Go ahead. Verse 19. And when he had received meat. And when he had received meat. He was strengthened. He was what? Strengthened. Strengthened. Read on. Then was sold certain days with the disciples. Oh, so he was persecuting the disciples of Christ at one point of his life. When he repented was, and was a follower of Christ, now he's right along with the very same disciples that he was persecuting. See, see how the Lord could turn any man around, even a murderer like Paul was. Go ahead. It says... Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples that were at Damascus. So let's see if he came out a wet sinner. You got some people say, Israelites with Bibles, fringes, blue water, Hebrew names. You're talking about when you baptize a murderer in water, he gonna come out a wet murderer. Oh really? Let's see if that's the case with Saul of Tarsus. Because Christ said in Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So let's read on. Verse 20. Acts 9 verse 20. And straight away he preached Christ in the synagogue. So wait a minute. At one moment Paul was tarrying to turn to the Lord. And Ananias' brother in Christ set him straight. That's the Holy Spirit. The brother gets baptized. Now what he doing? Read that verse again. And straight away, he preached Christ in the synagogues. So right away, he preached Christ. That he is the son of the living God in the synagogues. They say synagogue or synagogues? Synagogues. Synagogues, right. Which were in Syria. Uh -huh. That he is the son of God. Yeah, I said it before, right. So what was Paul teaching? That Christ is the son of the living God. Before he persecuted those that believed and taught that Jesus Christ was the Son of the Living God, the man repented, got baptized in water. Now he's preaching that Christ is the Son of the Living God. Go ahead, brother. Verse twenty-one. But all that heard him, that all that heard him, were amazed. They were amazed. Read on. Why and were they amazed that Paul was preaching that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God in the synagogues? Let's find out. And said, and said, is not this he that destroyed them? Is not this he that destroyed them? Which called on his name which, in Jerusalem? Which called on his name in Jerusalem? They were like, wait a minute. This man right here is teaching that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God? They were shocked. They were like, ain't this the same man that was persecuting and destroying those that called on his very same name? that he's preaching under the power and authority of and influence of that blew them out of the waters read on and came hither for that intent that's why he came here to begin with he came here to Damascus to persecute and bring in chains bring them bound in chains to Jerusalem to be persecuted and killed now he's here in the synagogues teaching that Christ is the son of the living God. They were amazed. Read on. That he might bring them bound unto the chief 
priests. So Paul's intent was to bring those that believed in Jesus Christ in Damascus in the synagogues to bring them bound in chains onto the chief priests. Read on. But Saul increased the more in strength. See? Then Paul increased the more in what? Strength. So he didn't come out of wet center. Because Saul of Tarsus was baptized because he believed in Christ. So when he baptized, when Paul or Saul of Tarsus was baptized in water, he understood spiritually what was happening. That he was being joined unto the death and burial of Christ. And how his old man was going to be dead and buried in that water. And the man coming out of that water would not be Saul of Tarsus. It would be Saul of Paul in Christ. A new creature. And he came out a new creature. A hater of the brethren, a persecutor of the brethren, became a lover of the brethren. A preacher of the gospel of Christ. Read on. And confounded Jews. And confounded the, the men of Israel. Read on. Which dwell at Damascus. Which dwell at Damascus. So when he confounded them, that means in the scriptures. It's going to explain. Read on. Proving. Proving. That this is very Christ. That this is the what? This is very Christ. That this is very Christ. So, Saul of Tarsus was proven out of the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and the Psalms of David, that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ. He confounded them in the scripture. He went into the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and the Psalms of David, and was bringing out the scriptures preaching Jesus of Nazareth. That he is the Christ according to those verses in scripture. They couldn't gainsay the wisdom, nor resist the wisdom that he spake. So that was verse 1, 22. So all praise to the Heavenly Father Christ. So you name when you read on, you read about the ministry of Saul, uh, Paul. That brother became a pillar in the church. And it was the Lord. Like he said, even Paul himself said, I could do all things through the Lord with strengthening. Let's get that uh, before we wrap it up. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. All right, that's why Ananias was telling him, call on the name of the Lord. See? Because through the Lord, we can do all things. We can overcome all things. We can endure all things. No matter what state we're in, we're content. And we can endure all things because Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven is the one that strengthened us to endure and overcome all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So all praise to the Heavenly Father in Christ. For these scriptures, brother, you have a scripture you want to bring out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank God bless you, Israel. Thanks for tuning in tonight. All praise. Peace and blessings to your homes. And it says on this in this walk, this this true walk in Christ. All right, Israel. Well, thank God bless you all. Shalom. Well, thank God bless you all. Peace and blessings.